Hi Scorpio, I hope you're all doing well. We're going to get into your general reading and see what Spirit wants to talk to you about today. I'm using the in Untamed Spirit Animal Oracle to see what energies are supporting you at this time as well as what energies may be presenting a challenge. And then I might go with Rider Waite or this Cat Tarot here that I have. We'll see. All right, Scorpio, what's coming up here for you? Uh, what energies is Scorpio working with that is supporting Scorpio at this time? We have anaconda, camouflage, and imbalance. Ooh, I feel like you are staying away from people who are out of balance, <laughs> okay? And you're not letting them get into your energetic field or bother you. I also feel like in your usual Scorpio self, you're being stealth with something, and I don't mean that in a negative way at all. I mean that you're navigating some dark waters i'm hearing some dark waters with ease is that it with ease with skill navigating dark waters with skill and part of the part of the skill that you have is by staying away from people who are out of balance invisibility yeah revelation here ooh with the lynx and bear protection and faith. I love this for you, Scorpio. This feels like right in your energy. I feel like you're you're feeling a lot of power or you should real soon. Hi, Pixie. Can I come up and say hi to Scorpio? Here's your Pisces water sign friend <laughs> to say hi to you. Maybe there's a Pisces in your life that could support you at this time or you're working with Pisces energy. Okay. I know Scorpio rules excretion, but I don't think they want to see your butt <laughs> Okay, Scorpio, give me one second here. Pixie, I know we love you. Say hi to Scorpio. Hello, Scorpio. Okay. I'll be with you soon, sweetie. I'm hearing there's a time and a place for everything. I feel like this is true, especially with the cats, but maybe for you as well. You're realizing that something, um, <laughs> it's not the right time or the right place to engage with something perhaps for you. Okay, um, what's the challenge? What's the challenge here for Scorpio? Coyote, intelligence, and unpredictability. Uh, is this why you're being so skillful and stealth? You you're dealing with some kind of trickster energy here. It could be within yourself, right? Every tarot reading can be, well, it essentially is, okay? You with yourself, okay? Whether it's your knowledge of someone else, your projection of someone else, your, your psychic knowingness of someone else, or whether it's someone else represented representing back an aspect of yourself to you does that make sense okay it doesn't matter but <laughs> the point is here this reading could be about you with yourself or it could be about you with another but ultimately it's you who knows what is going on in any context about anything the 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 information that's coming out here is coming from you okay and that's why if it doesn't resonate, it's not your reading, okay? Do you get that? All right, I feel like you do, Scorpio. Okay, wild goose, trust in the group and communication. Maybe somebody here is communicating with you in a way that is, oh, okay, I'm, I'm getting something like there's somebody hiding in a group. Jaguar, charisma, shamanic gifts. Hmm. What is this now, Scorpio? There's somebody kind of in a group or hiding in a group. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Somebody. You feel you need to protect yourself from or you should. 
So this could be a group of people you're working with, a friend group, uh, or it could just be like somebody you know is disguising themselves in some way. Maybe they're, you know, operating under an alias. I don't know. Maybe they're contacting you from an unknown number. I'm not sure exactly the 3D situation for you, but it feels like this person is smart, okay? And they have a lot of charisma as well. And they probably get some support from a group in some sense, or people are drawn to them. There's something unpredictable about this person's nature as well. And I feel like that's why you're camouflaging yourself in visibility, protection, which means you could know something, but you're not saying it. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is kind of interesting here. Tell me more, uh, a little bit more about Scorpio's power. I'm hearing about Scorpio's power in this situation. Scorpio's power. I'm hearing pixel here. <laughs> the cat pixel. I don't know, something maybe about um, intuition or maybe the Pisces is important in your chart. What house does Pisces rule for you? We have mortality. It's like the death card here, which of course you know is your, your card. Nothing lasts forever. That's your power. You know that nothing lasts forever. Everything changes. Nothing ever stays the same. And so this person, if they, if they so choose to cloak themselves, uh, I'm hearing something about like their, their robe dropping and they will be revealed. I don't know. <laughs> Seems strange. It's a metaphor. This person can't hide forever. And I feel like because you're already aware of this, because I am picking up on your consciousness, right? Because you are aware of this, they have already revealed themselves in some way. And now it's just a matter of time, I feel like, for you. Until what? Mm, just give me one. Until Scorpio does what or what happens the philosopher oh scorpio this is a cool reading i'm hearing um reversal yeah i was just gonna say it's like until you use their energy um against them but it's not really to do any harm but it's like hmm, somebody's projecting something onto you or, or acting shady acting like a trickster and you're like huh i see that over there mm-hmm interesting Thank you for giving me that energy now to transmute and work with on my own. It's like they're giving you some access to information unknowingly. I hope this, well, I feel like whoever's message this is, it will make sense to you. We're going to do an extended. If you want to go a layer deeper with me, there's a link to that in the description box below. My name is Andy. <laughs> I don't know why I have to say that. My name is Andy. Maybe it's like this person is saying like, my name is, or you're asking like, yeah, it's like identifying. Someone's identifying themselves or you're identifying someone. Philosopher and mortality. This person, I'm hearing, they know not what they do. And what they do do is give you more access to information to work with. This is interesting. It almost almost has this energy of like a troll, right? Where the person's trying to troll you, trying to say things um, to kind of like, I don't know, just gibberish or whatever they're trying to do. And it's like, it's not working, but whatever they're presenting you with is giving you food for thought that you can use elsewhere. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody in our life is a teacher in that sense. And I feel like you know that. Okay? And you it's uh, yeah, I also feel like someone's slot on the sly asking you to teach them, but you're not. You're allowing them to teach you something. Not in a hierarchical way where we have master student, not not like this kind of 
imbalance of power. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like, okay, I, I, I don't need to share what I know right now with you because I don't see that benefiting myself, my highest self, or your highest self. But I will allow you to speak or tell me what you want to tell me. And I can learn from that. Interesting. Okay. I, I, this could also be happening in a love context as well, right? Somebody could be revealing something, they're saying something, or they're doing something, or they're not doing something. It could be even inaction. Inaction is also a choice, a decision that reveals information, okay? When somebody chooses not to act or not to show up, it tells you a lot. So, yeah, interesting. So tell me, what is this person actually trying to achieve over here? The dough, truth, and love. What kind of weirdo, Scorpio? I love you guys. And I love this person. Love for all, okay? <laughs> love for all. Love and light for all. <laughs> yeah, but there's something strange here that this person is doing. Look, they're, the, they're coming off as the coyote and... What they want to happen is like to see you in some vulnerability. Yes, that's what they want. 1111. They want to catch you unawares. They want to make you vulnerable or they want to see your vulnerability. They want to see your truth. Okay. Maybe they want to know who you love or what you love or what your heart chakra looks and feels like. Some of, some of these, for some of you, this person wants to know if you love them and they feel like they have to go on some kind of wild goose chase with you to figure it out. For some reason, this person doesn't feel like they can come to you straightforward and ask you some question here. Or, or yeah, it's interesting. I feel like this person, for a lot of you here, feels like they love you. Okay. Um, this is coming to mind uh, a long time ago <laughs> when I, I was doing a reading for myself and I asked, uh, does, does this person, I was asking him about, like, what is their feelings? Do they feel like they love me? Do they think they love me? And the answer was yes. And then I was like, hmm but do they actually love me? And then the answer was no. And I was like, oh, that's interesting, right? Because someone can have a concept that they actually love you and they care about you, but it doesn't align with the frequency and vibration of universal love. And it's like spirit saying here, I feel like to you, somebody genuinely is attracted to you, even in work, we could, you know, love doesn't have to be romantic. It's an energy wavelength, right? It's like someone's attracted to you. Someone wants to be in your energetic field, uh, communicating with you or knowing you in some way. And I think they genuinely feel like they their feelings are legit and true, but they're not really aligned to the concept of, of true love, the frequency of love. Because if they were, they wouldn't be doing something like shady like this, right? I mean, that's not <laughs> love. And I feel like you know that. And that's why you're protecting yourself here. What a interesting reading, Scorpio. Okay. Hmm. Let's get further here. Is this goose alone? Hmm. There's shadows. Oh, this is interesting because geese, I'm, I'm up here in Canada and we got lots of geese over here. Okay. Geese uh, usually are together. It's very rare to see one alone. Okay. And that's why I think it's in the wild unknown. Is it? The wild unknown where the lover's card is the geese flying together. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, they're usually together. And here I was looking, is this person with someone? Do they have someone by their side? And there's nobody there. There are other geese pictured, but they're shadows. See that? How interesting is that? 
It's like this person is flying with their shadows. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe trying to fly away from them too. Okay, let's get some cards out here for Scorpio. Five of Pentacles. Yeah, that came out before for their energy. There's something that they feel they lack at a very deep level. Maybe it is love. Perhaps you emit the frequency of love and they're trying to get to know that through you. Okay, three more. And then I'll cut it. Scorpio, what's going on here? I'm, I'm hearing this. I don't know who this is for, but I'm hearing I'm in your town. I don't know, Scorpio. Let me um, pull out some charms, actually, before we get into the cards. These could just give you little clues that this message is for you, uh, or maybe there's an actual message in here, like it means something to you. Whoa, we got quite a few things here. We have the letter Q, the letter A. I feel like that's question and answers. We have the letter C, U, like C, U, I see you. Yeah, I feel like this person has definitely got their eye on you with the coyote there. The way the coyote is looking at that doe. Yeah, K and M, B, V, K, again, uh, L, J, E, and an R, and B, another B. I'm hearing be right back. Perhaps this is somebody that you've already had a conversation with, like mm -hmm, recently, I feel. Maybe you didn't even realize you were talking to this person. I'm seeing a triangle here, a wine glass, the scales here, Libra. It could also indicate karma. We have a starfish, which is about intuition. A caduceus here, which is about healing, but we also have this entanglement of the two serpents. Uh, interesting. Hmm. The moon. Yeah, I feel like there's definitely something shady happening here. We have Virgo, uh, a little angel that says on the back, made for an angel. And two hearts here, three hearts, but one of them is empty. For some of you, this person is involved with someone or something else. There's there's some other energy that maybe they're trying to run from. Doesn't have to be like another, I don't know. It could be anything here, but the this concept of a love triangle or a triangle or a third party issue, <laughs> and I was gonna say situation, third party issue is coming up here. Okay, yeah. I feel like I'm hearing salvation. It's like they're looking to you for salvation unbeknownst to themselves. <laughs> Scorpio is salvation. Okay, interesting. Okay, well, you're chilling. <laughs> Your overall energy is the four of swords. I feel like this is going to be a longer one. That's okay. Um, we got... For their outside energy... Ooh. Ooh, hmm. Yeah, I did say they're very smart. We have the Queen of Swords, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Four of Cups. This is somebody like Scorpio. Why don't you want to talk to me? Why, why are you protecting yourself? Why are you rejecting me? Like, it's like somebody feels they, like I said, someone feels they know the truth about their own feelings or about your feelings. They're genuinely feeling like they have a good handle on the situation. I don't feel like this person is confused, but I also don't think they really do have a, an accurate portrayal or picture, interesting, of the situation. It's very one-sided. I feel like you've done some work to move on from this, but spirit is talking to you about this. And I know some people don't like to talk about people from the past, but like, wouldn't you want to know if somebody's like sneaking up around you in some kind of strange way here, which I feel is going on. Now, if you feel like, no, that's definitely not happening, then it's not your message. I love you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> okay. Or check out your other placements or I don't know, unsubscribe, do what you want. Right. I love you. <laughs> okay. Lots of I love you's coming out here. Lots of talk about I about love. Yeah, I feel like maybe you have a better understanding of love here because of this situation. For some of you, this might not even have happened yet. Okay, 
you could come back to this message months from now and it could resonate. Okay, so this is somebody who's been very slow with the Knight of Pentacles to come towards you to speak their truth and to hear what you got to say about <laughs> this rejection. I feel like that about sounded really Canadian. About, <laughs> about this re rejection here. Okay, maybe they're Canadian. I don't know. That could be for some of you. Or they have an accent of some sort or there's something about their voice. Uh, now, I just did a collective reading for the Lunar Eclipse in Scorpio, and we talked a lot about the Queen of Swords and this double-edged sword. And if you have, if this message is resonating and you haven't seen that, I'll link it at the end in the box that comes up, and you should watch it. Because I feel like that message is something that maybe this person should hear. You know, because what I was saying there is that the sword that the queen of, of swords holds up is double edged, meaning that it could cut her too. If she isn't speaking her own truth or if she's lying about something, demanding the truth to, from someone else, she's going to get hurt karmically. Okay. So maybe this person doesn't understand that. Okay. Woo. All right. <laughs> I saw the Queen of Wands. I was like, woo, I don't know what, why. Okay, that's what's ending, the Queen of Wands. And what's beginning, it's the Empress. You're elevating. Okay, Four of Swords for your overall energy. You're just kind of chilling in these dark waters because you've learned how to navigate through them. I feel like you're healing, you're at rest. Oh, interesting. But look, what's going to surprise you is the Ace of Swords. And you'll notice here in the Four of Swords that there's three swords hanging on the wall. There's been heartbreak, okay, painful thoughts that this person has overcome, okay, has gotten through. And there's a sword that they're sleeping on, the Sword of Truth, the Sword of Clarity, the Sword of Knowledge and Communication and Wisdom and all those things. They have that by their side should they need to encounter the Three of Swords energy again. And what's going to surprise you is the Ace of Swords. You're going to pick up that sword. Maybe you felt like you'd never have to engage with this energy again. And I'm not saying you're going to necessarily have to speak to them, although for some of you, you will. But for others of you, this is like, I, I understand now another layer into this situation. The truth. And I feel like, this person is going to come towards you either demanding truth or trying to speak their truth. Okay. And, and, and what? It's very interesting here. Ten of cups. The star. So wait, what do you think about this person's truth? What is Scorpio going to think about this person's truth? The chariot justice, <laughs> that it's justice that they're saying something here to you. Hmm. Nine of swords, the devil. Now, what happened to that message in the beginning the seven of swords. Yeah. See, there's something here. It's like, maybe it feels good that this person is trying to communicate with you, but you still know it's not the truth. I'm hearing bittersweet. Now in the beginning, we had a message here of like somebody almost trolling, like giving you information, not realizing that's what they were doing. They will realize that though. They will realize that. I don't know what you do here in relation. It's not that this person is elevating you. It's that your reaction or your response, it's not even a reaction. You're beyond reaction mode, okay? The, your response, what you do with this information or what you do with this situation is what elevates you your new perspective on what's going down here, your ability to understand what is fair and what's not fair, what is true and what's not true, what matters and what doesn't matter, and how this person has been hiding and cloaking themselves for so long only to come out to, I don't know, um, 
say something that really feels a little insignificant to you, it all helps you solidify your own conscious awareness of other people's intentions. Okay, what's ending is the Queen of Wands. I feel like that's you, because what's beginning is the Empress. Now, it could represent another person if you feel like that, but this is an energy here that is very attractive, very well-liked, Okay, very, very much like in the public eye as well. And because you're now in the anaconda lynx bear, like this hidden cloaked energy in a good sense, not cloaked in a shady sense, but a protective way. I feel like that's why the Queen of Wands is ending. This could be a Gemini for some of you. I just uh, intuitively feel that. Okay, or they have Gemini heavily in their chart. The Empress for what's beginning. Judgment. Three of Swords. Six of Cups. This is you... really knowing how to use the powers of a spiritual awakening to do what i'm hearing like to ascend but what what actually use the spiritual powers of awakening to center yourself in your own reality of manifestation while allowing someone else to be released from their karma this is what i'm getting i don't i don't even know exactly what that means but it, it's like taking a very mature approach to this person's actions and behaviors and understanding that they're happening for a reason a divine purpose uh, i'm hearing for you to guide and lead others Or combative, combativeness and honor. Yeah, it's like this person's looking for a little bit of a conflict with you, I feel. But you've already fought this battle with this person. And you are sitting in a position of honor here. Gorilla, nobility and leadership. See? I feel like you're leading. You're leading others through uh, using your experience as a foundation or, or a textbook, I'm hearing, or as a textbook, or you could even be inadvertently leading this person just by acting from your highest self. Okay, King of Cups for your advice. Let's get a little bit further into this. I feel like this is... How do I say that? The, again, the theme of maturity is coming up here. It's like witnessing what's going on here, really paying attention to it, really seeing it for what it is. Well remained in grounded and still in touch and in tune with your emotions around the situation as well as your intuition. Okay, there is a very logical approach you're taking, but it's not a disconnected cold approach based on facts or reason alone. I mean, that's definitely in there. But you're also you, Scorpio, water, you know, and I, I feel like you're not allowing this person or this situation to dock your boat i heard to dock your boat okay to minimize the power of your emotional intuition in other words 
You're not allowing this person to get you to a place or a point in which you feel you need to disconnect from your heart chakra. Staying true to yourself and who you really are. And so many of you here have such a beautiful, beautiful heart. So sensitive, so soft. And you've worn an, a suit of armor for a long time. And I feel like Spirit is saying, hmm, how, how do I say? You're still protected. It's like you're still wearing that armor, but it's not weighing you down anymore. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we got the Six of Cups again, Venus and Scorpio. Like, you're full of love and beautiful energy, even while you have to wade through the dark waters of this bullshit. <laughs> This, this person cannot get you out of your essence and your energy, no matter what they do or what they say or how they try to negotiate the terms of service with you, I'm getting. <laughs> okay, how, what's going to manifest in the next three months for you? The Page of Pentacles. This is you taking on a new lesson here, learning something new. Yeah, like I said in the beginning, this person is teaching you. And you're accepting the lesson. And you're doing something with it. You're seeing the value in what's gone on here. <laughs> I'm hearing trolls have value too. And, and they do if you approach them in that mindset. Right? I'm not saying you need to embrace troll energy or anything like that. And even if this is love, I feel like there's still a trolling essence about this energy, okay? But it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not like you need to invite that energy in. But if it, if it does come towards you and you are encountered with it, it's like it's a moment where you can decide, will I take this as something to learn from? And it doesn't mean you need to spend exorbitant amounts of time meditating on somebody's energy that is not like, you know, I hope you know what I'm saying here. It's all about perspective on how you deal with situations. Okay, like every person who comes towards you that bothers you in a sense shows you maybe where you could put up more boundaries energetically or actually or how you need to actually start enforcing a boundary. Like everything is, is a way for you to reflect back to yourself your own power and strength. This is beautiful. Okay, I feel like the message is done there. Ten of Pentacles at the bottom. Yeah, this is about building a sense of stability in the long run for your heart, soul, and mind. Okay, Scorpio, I'm going to go into the extended. We're going to go a layer deeper. I am going to dig more into this energy and also to see what else is coming up for you. But if this is where you go, I love you so much and I'll see you next time.